Hi folks, welcome to this short video on calculating the value of contributed capital for share options on share-based uh, compensation plans that are equity settled. So in this particular case, we've been asked to prepare a calculation and to make the entries to record annual expense, that's compensation expense, in order to adjust the equity account. We also have to record an entry to record the exercising of options for some of the employees who remained until the end of the vesting period. And then for those who remained till the end of the vesting period, some of those employees opted not to exercise their options. So we also have to make an entry for lapsed options. So let's begin. What I opted to do here, and we've, um, I highly recommend it, is to prepare a table to calculate the annual expense to help you calculate the amount of the adjustment to the equity account. The equity account that I refer to is the account down here. It's called Contributed Capital Share Options. That's an equity account because it appears in the balance sheet and the equity section. Now, in order to do that, what we need to do is dissect our problem a little bit to see if we can calculate the value that we need to have in the option account at the end of every year. Don't forget, because it is a balance sheet account in the equity section, that account never closes. So the contributed capital share option account doesn't close. So therefore, its balance builds. So what the table is going to be giving you is the table is going to be giving you a final amount for um, uh, for the um, amount needed to, to be in that equity account. And that's the line that I'm highlighting here. Okay, so now let's begin our analysis. The question told us that the options, the fair value of the options were 480,000. And remember we said that under an equity settled plan, we keep the value of the options the same as they were at the grant date. So when the board agrees that they want to grant options to employees, they value the options at that date and notice throughout the vesting period that value never changed. Don't forget, we don't know whether or not any of these people are even going to exercise the option at the time that we issue them or at the time that we grant them because we have no idea uh, at the end of the vesting period whether or not the options will have intrinsic value. So from an accounting perspective, we say because that fair value that we're using is, is used to help us calculate the value of the equity account, we don't, va we don't change it because we don't even know if that equity account that we're creating and adjusting is even going to have any value. Why? Because we don't know if these people will exercise the options or not. It depends if they have intrinsic value. If they have intrinsic value, we may exercise them. If they don't, we won't. So now, uh, if we look at our calculation to get the equity balance that we need, we're going to start with the fair value of the options, which we set as 480000 and we leave that value throughout the vesting period, times what we call the cumulative vesting factor. So for every year that an employee works, the options grow, right? The options in the account grow. So we multiply it by one year, the first year of five years in the vesting period, by two over five, which means now we've doubled or we've <clears throat> we've come an extra year throughout the vesting period, which means the required equity balance is going to get bigger. And you notice that we multiplied by the cumulative vesting factor each year, <clears throat> and then we multiplied by the retention rate. In most of these questions, the retention rate will be given to you. Sometimes you might have to calculate them. So for example, in our question, they told us that 32 of the 42 employees we expected to remain throughout the vesting period. So this retention rate is really 32 divided by 42 if you actually calculated it. I should put divided by. So sometimes they might give it to you just by telling you the number of employees they think will stay throughout the vesting period divided by the total number of people who got who are eligible to get the options. All right. So you just have to be careful when you when you look at the questions. But in any case, we're given them here. And um, to calculate the required balance, 
we ha in the equity account, we multiply the fair value of the options times the cumulative vesting factor times the retention rate. And we're going to get 72960 as the ending balance in the equity account at the end of X3, 136320 at the end of X4, and so on to the end of X6 and F5, 6, and 7. Now, notice here what we did is we used, or I calculated, I, when I multiplied these three numbers, I got 398,400. I have a little footnote here, or an end note, and if you go down to the note, it says there, if you used a retention factor of 35 or 42, the reason I'm uh, saying that is that we know that 35 employees out of the 42 who uh, were employed uh, uh, initially, 35 of them survived the vesting period. So they, they passed the endurance test, so to speak. And that's technically 83.3 repeating percent, right? So you get a, a more accurate number here with this percentage than you do when we round it to two decimal places. I just elected to round it to two decimal places uh, here because even though this would give you, if you use this figure, a more accurate value for the options on the balance sheet, and if you used it, you'd get 400,000, all right? Um, I opted to just go with the two decimal places, 0.83, because they've done this all the way along. So to stay consistent with the retention rate calculation, I've used that. Okay, uh, I've used two decimal places. So my number might be a little bit different, okay? But you might have got 400,000. Now, I know the opening balance of the equity account at the beginning of X3 was zero. They didn't give me a balance, so I'm assuming it's zero. In the case of X4, or sorry, um, where am I going here? I want to go to shapes. I wanted to just draw these little arrows for you. So um, you can kind of see uh, where the numbers are where the numbers are going. I'm just going to do a couple of these for you here. Um, actually, I move that there. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that because the opening balance was zero, our adjustment required to our equity account in order to get this ending balance would be to make an adjustment or credit the account by 72,960, which is what we've done down here. But our debit would be what? Our debit would be to an income statement account compensation expense. Why the compensation expense? Well, you remember from a previous video, what we said is that the value of the option has to be allocated over the vesting period. In this case, we're not allocating it straight line. What we're doing is we're allocating it based on the retention rate. So compensation expense each period is going to change because our rates of retention or our estimates of retention are different. So in this case, we're going to get compensation expense debit to balance off our credit for 72960 right? Don't forget, the, the options that these people are getting are part of their compensation. It's no different than your monthly or weekly salary or wages, right? A company in the payroll department would record that as a wage expense, a cost of having an employee. So too are these uh, share-based payments or these compensation arrangements that may issue options to buy shares. These are expenses in a sense because it's part of the cost of having an employee. So we book it as an expense when we adjust the equity account. Similarly, in X4, we know the ending balance in the equity account should be 136,320. But don't forget, the ending balance at the end of X3 is the opening balance at the beginning of X4. So I'm just drawing the arrow down here so you know for me to get the adjustment for X4, I have to take the balance I need or the difference between the balance I have and the balance I need at the end of the year. And that's going to give me 63,360. Okay. Now, if I uh, continue this logic, I'm going to be doing the same thing. Let's see if I copy and paste this a little quicker. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I gotta drag it, but anyway, that's okay. Now, the same logic here that I'm using, I'm saying that uh, my um, uh, entry here, <clears throat> or sorry, my entry here needs to be 63,360 in order to adjust the account to this balance. So I'm gonna debit the compensation expense. 
for 63360 and credit the share option account which is now going to once this second entry is posted give me a balance of 136320 and I use this method all the way through in X5 I see what the ending balance of my equity account needs to be I know what it was to open the period because I know what it was to end that previous period so I need to make an adjustment to the equity account and credit it for 102720 which means in order to allocate some part of this 480 I'm going to need to debit the compensation expense don't forget these options are cost of maintaining your employees or keeping your employees so we need to debit it to an income statement account that we call compensation expense now in x6 similar calculation required balance is 311040 by multiplying this column of numbers we already have 239040 in it so we need to adjust our equity account by 72000 and the offsetting debit would be to compensation expense and our last amount is handled the same way so now we've calculated all of our adjustments and we've made journal entries for all of them now the question asks you to prepare an entry to um, to uh, exercise the options so now in order to prepare that entry we go back to the question and it says of the 35 employees that remained all right we've got only 25 of them that exercise their options so only 25 people are going to get 3,000 uh, the option to buy 3,000 shares each so how much cash do these guys do these 25 guys have to give the corporation in order to get the right to buy these shares well collectively the company is going to get two million two hundred and fifty thousand how did we calculate that well don't forget I've got the calculation here each of those 25 people who decided to exercise their options is going to get 3,000 shares right so you're going to have 75,000 shares out there scattered amongst 25 people and their exercise price is going to be $30 a share so in essence to get those 75,000 shares these guys are having to pay the company the exercise price which is $30 a share so that's why we debited cash of two million two hundred and fifty thousand we use this calculation right here now what's going to happen is if 25 of the 35 people are exercising their options then that means we need to draw down on the contributed capital account for the share option and now we have to calculate the amount well we already know that by the time we get to the end of the vesting period the value in our equity account is 3984 so we're going to draw down on that amount by a fraction of 25 over 35 this 398 400 represents the value of the options that are available for the 35 people that remain through the vesting period so you can see this doesn't equal the original 480,000 we had here because it's adjusted for forfeitures meaning some people left or forfeited their right to get the options or to exercise them at a later date so in this case we value the option account at 3984 so that's the value upon which we're going to draw down but because only 25 of the 35 employees exercise the option our calculation now to debit the contributed capital share option account is to multiply 3984 by 25 over 35 now notice that instead of using 3984 if you had used earlier 400,000 as we explained up here in this little footnote you would have got 285,714 for your number we got 284,571 when we did our math all right now in order to issue the common shares if you're the corporation you're going to be issuing them based on the book value method which means it's going to be predicated on the $30 exercise price that the investors gave you not the $54 a share that it's trading at at the time they decided to exercise their options that $54 doesn't enter into it but what we do using the book value method is we plug 
and we say we're going to issue common shares at this value using the book value method, which is $2,534,571. Now, the balance, by the time we get to the end of X8, the end of X8, or the end of year 8, is when the options lapse. And we notice that by the time we got to the end of that year, the market price of the shares fell to $24. Well, there's no way people are going to pay $30 a share, which is the exercise price, in order to get shares worth less than that, which is $24 a share. So they, the remaining 10 people who didn't exercise their options earlier have opted just to let the opportunity slip by. So now we have to draw down on the remaining balance in the contributed capital share option account, and that's 113,829. And that's calculated as 10 over 35. The remaining 10 people of the 35 that did not exercise their options multiplied by the value of the options in the account. If you had used 400,000 as opposed to this number here, you'd get a different number than we did. We got 113,829. Um, you might get 114,289. But it doesn't matter uh, depending on how you round it. Now, notice that we credit the elapsed or expired options for the same amount, 113829 Now, the question also asks you to consider why compensation expense varied uh, each year. Well, because the uh, retention level changes every year, right? So don't forget, part of the uh, calculation of the expense account uh, has to do with the fact that the retention rates are changing each period. Uh, the other thing we have to remember here too is, uh, in, and they asked this of you in one of the requireds, they say what intrinsic value was received when the options were exercised and is this reflected on the statements? Well, don't forget the intrinsic value received is the difference between the exercise price and the fair value of the shares. So don't forget, if these guys can buy the um, uh, shares from you when they exercise their options at $30 a share and the shares are trading at $54, each share has an intrinsic value of $24 a share. So each employee has an intrinsic value because they're each going to get 3,000 shares, right, of $72,000. But this value isn't recorded because we set up the options based on their fair value at grant date and we don't vary that throughout the period. So it's always going to be um, uh, valued. The uh, option is always going to be valued based on its value at the grant date. So the intrinsic value is never recorded. Who benefits from the intr intrinsic value is the investor, right? So if they've paid $30 to get shares, that are really worth $54, they're the ones that have made, you know, uh, a profit on that, right? So in their, you know, books, so to speak, they would be recording that extra value of $24 a share. The company does not, okay? So this concludes our video on um, share-based payments for equity settled plans.